Hey y'all, you got Porty's Garage here. I'm testing out a new radio from TID Radio. This is the M11 FRS. They claim this should be waterproof. So it needs <laughs> to be able to withstand. Holy crap, I can't see any sprays like this. Keep going. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is it withstanding this? 10-4, I can hear you loud Oh my goodness, that's horrible. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This here is Porty's Garage home of DIY, mostly geared to automotive, but here at Mix, you never know what you're going to get. So you can see I'm out in the back porch this morning here. Got my cup of coffee all ready to go here. It's nice and quiet. And today we are going to unbox and review the TID Radio TD M11 FRS slash PMR radio. So just got to be honest here. I did open it to charge it up, but everything is still packed in. These were sent to me by TID Radio. We are an affiliate of them now. So let's do this review, we'll give an honest opinion. And I'm going to be going over some of the features. Then we're gonna be doing a field test, see uh, distance, check out some distance in different terrain. We'll do some in hills, some in trees, maybe even uh, get the boat out and do some in open water. We'll see if that works. The weather looks a little uh, rainy here today. Uh, I did see that it's stated on their website waterproof I looked into that a little more it's actually an IP 55 rating so I looked that up to make sure I understood what that was and it is protected against dust but it does say protected against jets of water in all directions doesn't say how you know that the rating doesn't say how long uh, does just say jets of water so we'll be putting some jets of water on one of these and see if she'll still work there and then it does say it has Bluetooth, so I'm going to try the Odemaster app again, which I tried on the uh, TID Radio uh, TDH3, which worked very well for repeating uh, programmers. I did find a uh, GMRS repeater in the area, so I'm going to try to program one of the channels of this radio and then see if we can hit that repeater. May have to drive a little closer. I don't know if this will have enough power from here to get all the way uh, to the distance we need, but I do want to try that because that should open up a lot of doors. So let me get things moved around here and we will unbox this, show you what's in the box, go over some of the features, and then uh, we'll work on the field test. So give me a minute here to turn this around. All right, so we got the package here. Let me take this off, get rid of the outer casing. <clears throat> and we've got the TID radio box. Let's see what's inside. So we've got the user manual. I'll be going through that in a little bit. So we've got two cards. I believe they are the same. Well, they're a little different. So there we go. And it looks like you've got the two radios here. Oh, it's kind of nice. They've got two uh, chargers, actually. One for each radio, so you can do them both at the same time. So let's uh, pull these out. a different front on there it's got an LED screen we'll see what that looks like when we turn it on it's got a belt clip that goes on and I believe a battery you pull the battery off right there and I saw that too it looks like it's got you can use a docking station to charge this but I did read it has here it is right here the USB-C charging for that Make sure that's closed so if we do that water test, we don't have problems. So there's radio one. Looks like we got the same thing here. Radio two. Let's see, we got new battery. Or not the battery, the chargers. So we've got the wall plug and the USB C. Move that to the side. Looks like this is the same thing. I won't open that. That's sealed pretty good yet, so we will leave that sealed up. And then we've got two wrist straps. Nice box it comes in too. Let's move this to the side. Turn this down a little bit. There we go. And then... Turn on the radio. 18. 
turned on the radio. 18. Well, that's an interesting little uh, voice there. So you can see it says channel here. <clears throat> I wonder how I turn that on all the time. I'll hit the channel up and down. 17. 18. 18. So they're both on 18. Let's hit a push to talk. You can see that one fired up right there. So the volume, I wonder if these twist off. No, they don't twist off at all. So then it says you can go into Bluetooth by holding the channel minus with a long press. Let's see what happens here. That put on the NOAA weather there. Let's long press that again. That's off. Let's put on, try the long press up top. And that's not programmed to anything. Oh, there we go. Put my glasses on. I think that did look like the Bluetooth there. 19. That is the Bluetooth emblem. So I will be able 18. to use this dongle here that I used before the Ode Master and program that. So we'll show that later. And I believe this red light here tells you that it's on. So let me hold, press again. That turned off. So now we're on channel 18. The other thing I want to try before I go through the, uh, the manual is this little, uh, I mean, this even says Baofang, but it should be the same comms port on the side here. So let's try one of these. Let's see if this goes in. 17. Oop, I changed the channel there. 18. So now we're on 18. I believe that's coming through the speaker here. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to move across the room a little bit. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. That is, it's coming through the handset. Let's see if I can talk here. Let's let these lights go out. And I'm going to talk on the handset connected here. Test, test, test. Actually, let's do this. Let's turn this way up and go the other way, see what happens. Test, test, test. It definitely coming through the handset. So that works. So that means you can connect this use a <clears throat> excuse me three and a half and connect it to your uh, walker headset there so you can be uh, silent walking around with these so that's kind of interesting put those away <clears throat> excuse me again so let's just go through Comes in the box, you can see here's a walkie-talkie battery, You Type-C charger, belt clip, hand strap, user manual, which we talked about. We've got the uh, earphone and programming jack. That's right up here. So that was this piece again. And I will be able to use that. Uh, the antenna, the screen, the channel up and down. Uh, and it's the side key. So that's when you do the long press. That's what they mean by the side key. And you can see on the one, I got the NOAA weather when I did the uh, channel minus or the, the channel that was actually plus. I did channel plus was NOAA and channel minus was uh, the Bluetooth. So that worked great. You got the charging point port to the side, the volume switch up and down there, the push to talk button. That's both of these on the side and the battery release, which we talked about. So on the screen, this is what kind of what I want to think about here and see if I can hit the repeater. The CTCS uh, and the CDCS, when I program, I can put those in. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what the, the scramble and uh, comp ander is, but you've got your Bluetooth, which we showed on there. We got the Vox, you could do battery indicator channel, uh, the NOAA weather, sorry, that's the volume and the high and low power. So if I had nothing, let me see which one came up there. 
So nothing's on there. That means I'm on high power. Because if an L was there, that would mean low power. Receive signal. There's your NOAA weather. There was that uh, symbol there. And then you have your channel. It goes through some of your charging. Uh, whether it's red or green coming up there on. If it's flashing, you're on standby. You just have your battery indicators. Switching power off, selecting channel, transmitting. Those are all pretty simple. So here's something I've got to read more about here. This crack and copy and wireless copy. So I think this will be important if you actually program using the Odemaster app and you program these and you want to uh, set other radios and they have to be the same uh, make and model. If you want to set other radios to the same frequency that you programmed in, then you don't have to go through the Odemaster. You can just copy. And then you have got English. You've got the monitor, the scan. So I think through the programming, and I'm going to show you when I set up this, this dongle. I did look at the Odemaster before. I do want to change the NOAA long push button to the scan push button. So I think I can do that, and I'll show that a little later. We've got the Bluetooth that we've talked about. We just showed you the NOAA already, so you can have alerts. And then this just has your frequency range. Uh, it's the FRS, the PMR, like we said, and the GMRS, and you can see it's 400 to 480. Channel, it's this is the 22 channel because you can see I was already on 18. Let me go up through that and let's see what we make sure we do have 22. 22. So you've got all those. So it is the 22 channel version. And it's got spacing, voltage, battery, the antenna. That's what I was looking to see if that antenna come off. Because it is a 50 ohm. I was wondering if I could change the antenna. I may look into that. But these don't spin. So I don't want to pull those apart. Maybe... Maybe later we'll look at that, but I want to finish testing these before I start doing stuff like that. Then you've got your transmitting and receiving specs there. So, and then it's got troubleshooting guides. So that's about it for the radios. I will go turn these off and then we can get set up a little later today and do some uh, distance testing. I've got a couple points picked out that uh, are in our area. Some of them will be straight through woods. Some of them may be, uh, if you can get the boat out, I may test boat to shore for uh, straight communication. And then also uh, I've got through some hills and trees and see how far we can get. So we'll do that. And then I will test the, uh, the water testing on one of them, see if she still works. And then we will uh, program on the other one. So let me get the uh, thing set up and we'll continue on. All right, we got Porty's Garage here. It's a little wet and rainy, but we're gonna test these out on the, uh, the lake. I've got someone driving a trailer around, so we're gonna try to hit him a couple points. And let's see, uh, let's see, uh, you can tell they're there. So come back one more time. I got the uh, camera set up, come back one more time. We have reached the house. Over. All right, so you can see they're probably quarter mile, half mile, somewhere in there. I will figure that out and put it on the video. So uh, I'm gonna break here for a minute. And uh, all right, we're back again. All right, confirm you're at position one. Over. Father Mike, at position one. That is recorded. So they are about a mile through the trees uh due east of here so uh next uh hit at the boat launch that'll be uh 0.8 miles uh basically across the water then i'll come and get you yeah same here all right they're at the next position let's see if we can confirm uh, confirm you are at the boat launch 0.86 miles from uh, my current location. Confirm. We 
are at the boat launch. Uh, we are sitting in the parking lot and we are pointing miles away from the electric like side. It's quite clear from our, our side. How is it from your side? Coming in clear, so it looks like uh, it's just under a mile through the trees and across the lake you're, you're easy a mile without a problem. And it uh, looks like from the clouds in the back of this camera here, I may be testing the, uh, the IP55 water resistance of these radios quicker than I thought. 10-4. So these are supposed to be IP55 rated. It's raining right now. So uh, let's give them a shot. It's getting a little wet, not bad. We'll see if they last through some of this rain here. Calling position one, calling position one at the boat launch. Uh, We're here at the boat launch. Rain is coming down pretty nice right now. What you doing? Drifting in the middle, getting soaked. Recording me uh, testing the, the radio. So, uh, thanks for getting wet there, Otto boys. Yeah, it's coming down pretty good at the boat launch. Uh, there's some guy who's, uh, with a racing boat and he's testing props out. He's trying to beat the rain. Didn't quite beat the rain. Good thing these radios are waterproof though. We can still talk. <laughs> so it's really raining now. Let's go test uh, the phone. You can probably see it. Over here, uh, racing boat may have ran out of gas. Oh, I've got a little bit of extra gas. I'll be there in a minute. Testing the uh, the TID radio in the rain. It is definitely getting wet. We'll see how she lasts. We'll uh, follow up after this. I'll be right over then. I got a extra gallon for the guy. All right, it's the next day. Actually, the sun's out. We're done with the rain. Uh, you can see that we tested these in the rain. So I'm going to turn them back on, make sure they work. And if you didn't see the short uh, introducing this video, we actually sprayed these with a hose, so make sure you go check out that short. It's a little funny. My daughter had fun with that. So uh, let's turn these on. I got them on. Turn on the radio. One. Channel one. That baby works. Turn on the radio. One. So I key this one up. You can see that works. And key this one up. That one works. So they both definitely work. And what I'm going to try to do is program this. I'm going to try to program channel 22. And I can't remember. Noah should be the minus. So you can see I've got Noah here. I'm going to turn that back off. And then the upper button should turn on Bluetooth. So now I've got Bluetooth on. I'm going to go to my Odemaster. Let me turn this off and start that. I was just playing with it, and I found you don't need this dongle right here because there's Bluetooth in that unit. So let me turn on the Odemaster again so you don't see my location there. I'm going to hit Program, hit the Bluetooth. I've got the radio right there. select the model to radio and we've got the 22 I'm going to read it so I'm importing everything into here so a couple things I want to talk about they're all programmed in all 22 channels so if I go back frequencies high power I'm going to look at function first I'm going to turn the squelch way down, and I think functions for all of them. And Bluetooth, I'm going to keep on the up, and I'm going to make the bottom the scan. So I got Bluetooth and scan. So I believe that works. Now let's look at channels. Let's go to channel 22. I should be able to tell from here. Bluetooth, scan. Squelch at one, so that works. I'm on channel 22. So the repeater, I don't think I'll be able to hit it with these, um, but I did hear since I programmed this, I heard the repeater come in on the other one. So I can receive the repeater, I just I won't be able to hit it with these. So the output of the repeater is 462, which I've got here, 462. 
7250. Then the input for the repeater is 467.7250. That is done. High power. I don't think I want to change any of those, but I want this at 141. 141. I've got those. Let's save that as test 2M11. Confirm. I'm going to try writing. It's doing something here. All right, so how I should be able to test these. First thing I want to do is get off of the Bluetooth and I can't, I think that was down on now. Nope, that's the scan. But it's still on Bluetooth and look, some of the channels are low. I got something on 18. Six, three, four. That almost sounded like that was a repeater. I'm gonna look on here and see what frequency that is and check. So let me do a long press again. Off. So it scans off. Long press on the upper one. Bluetooth is done. So now if I go. Two. One. Twenty two. So that was channel 22 and normally it should come in on here but it doesn't, so let me try this. Let me get my GMRS license going here. WSDZ927, listening. But nothing's coming up there. I didn't think I'd be able to hit it, but if I go channel one, channel one, two, whoops, I'm on channel one on there. That may be why. One. See, it goes back and forth and we'll hit. So that works, but it's interesting. The Bluetooth is in the unit and you do not need the dongle. So I'm gonna pause the video here and uh, next time I drive up near this repeater, I'm gonna give that a try and see what happens. But for now, I may just scan and see what I hear and check the frequency on uh, channel 18 and see if that matches a, a repeater that I can find on the website. So hold on till we uh, see if I can test the repeater. All right, so here we are. I'm actually at Porty's Garage. I got these programmed for the repeater that's about three miles away, three and a half miles away. Let's see if they work. WSDZ927. Uh, confirm, Mr. Porty, you can hear. You can see the repeater's coming back with its call sign. Mr. Porty confirmed. So, Mr. Porty, it's uh, amazing. These uh, TID Radio M11s uh, doing a review on Porty's Garage. They actually work three and a half miles for the repeater. Please like and subscribe. All right, so we got all the testing done on these uh, M11 radios from TID Radio. So I just wanna go through a quick closeout here, go over a couple of things, I put some notes down. So as you can see from the short introducing the video and the clip at the beginning and the testing out on the boat, they are, and I'm not gonna say waterproof, but they're uh, the IP55 rated that they call for. So they're water resistant, they'll take some rain and some splash. I wouldn't drop them in the water though. Uh, scanning, one of the best features I like on there is you can scan through all the channels. You saw me program that. That was great. The repeater function. So that was actually pretty cool here. Uh, Michigan, we got a couple repeaters in. I was amazed we could hit it from Porty's house here, three and a half uh, miles away. Got to watch on the programming with the Odemaster going back and forth. You type in a couple of things. If you don't save it at the appropriate times, the tones drop off and it also reset back to the same, uh, frequency that was there before so just watch when you're programming make sure you get it in the, the radio right but it was amazing you could hit those repeaters and that's great for uh the the frs 
let's go over some of the distance that we found. So we were on the boat. You could see that uh, when the kids were driving the car around the lake, they're a mile away. Got a little scratchy about a mile that was in a car, you know, open window and through a lot of woods. I, I was on the water, but there was a lot of woods they had to cross through uh, on the road to the boat launch. But on the water, we hit a mile without a problem. It was clear. I bet you could go a mile and a half, almost two miles. So that'd be great for fishing on larger lakes and, and groups like that. And like we just talked about uh, using the repeater from Portage House, that antenna was high up on a, on a hospital and uh, we had no problem hitting it. So with a clean line of sight, we were going almost three miles with these radios. So that's gonna be about wrap it up. Just make sure you look for the uh, Portis Garage code, which is Portis Garage, which we'll have in a link below. If you're gonna check out some of these radios, I think they're fun to, fun to play with and uh, a good purchase. So thanks for watching. If you'd like the content, please make sure you like and subscribe.